or a God who is just and will only bring about um, punishment for the sins that you yourself commit or blessings upon you. And we can see, I think I put the other reference to Jeremiah in your handout, maybe not. Yeah, the, there's another reference in Jeremiah that says exactly the same thing as Ezekiel, um, contradicting this commandment that we have here. Now the next thing we have, you shall not swear falsely by the name of the Lord your God, um, for the Lord will not clear one who swears falsely by God's name. And this right here is used many different ways in a lot of different traditions. Some people, this, for some people this says, don't cuss, don't swear. Um, but with the swear falsely or to, uh, the Hebrew word here for swear actually means to put upon one's lips or to take upon one's lips. And then falsely, the Hebrew word is um, emptiness or nothingness or vanity or vainness. So, so we have here, you shall not put upon your lips anything that is vain, anything that is empty um, by the name of the Lord your God. Or you shall not um, in any way that is vain or uh, any way that is not truthful swear an oath by God. You shall not make a covenant um, using God's name as a witness um, to declare these things if you don't mean it. And so if you do do this, uh, the Lord will not clear. Or another way of saying that, the Lord will always know. Even if legally nobody can do anything to you, the Lord will know that you are swearing falsely by God's name and you will receive retribution um, for that. Now the next thing here is completely, completely radical um, as far as Mesopotamian society. Uh, the Israelites were the ones who came up with this idea of Sabbath. And so we have here, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. In six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea, and God rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, I cut out some of the, the text there, but this notion of Sabbath extended far beyond um, just the people of Israel. In the text itself, it declares that even the stranger shall have this Sabbath day. Even your slaves sh uh, should not work on the Sabbath. And so we can see in this building up of Sabbath, this was also a building up of a community or a society of humanity where everyone was equal, um, especially on this day of Sabbath where no one was to work. Um, and we can see sort of their... Uh, use of the beginning stories, the Genesis stories, to support that, uh, to support the, the notion that all of us are connected in this. All of us were made in the image of God, and so all of us have this Sabbath day just as God um, hallowed it. And with the Sabbath day, um, the Mesopotamians did have uh, a seven-day week. Um, and it was well known throughout the, the region, and so the, the Israelites had this seventh day as well. Uh, but they're the only ones that picked that last day to make it uh, the Sabbath. And also, one can read into this text by them making the seventh day the Sabbath. Um, the seven days don't correlate to any type of celestial cycles that we have. Uh, they don't correlate to the lunar cycle. They don't correlate to the solar cycle. And the entire um, calendar of the Israelites and Mesopotamians, and, um, they were built upon these celestial cycles. And so here again, the Israelites are saying that God is so transcendent, um, that God is even beyond these celestial cycles, so much so that uh, God would rest on this seventh day would create this new cycle um, where we have uh, six days, a day of rest, 
and then we begin our six days again. Um, a completely non-natural cycle that is being instituted into the people of Israel here. Uh, the next, honor your father and mother that you may long endure on the land and that the Lord your God is assigning to you. Um, we can see sort of a blessing here that the people will be receiving the, the promised land that they're looking for. But we can also see that the honor um, of father and mother extends to all children of all ages um, at all times. And so... This here, again, is just building up the society for Israel. And I need to hurry up because we're almost out of time. Then we have the short three, and I have pictures here. Someone has put the entire Bible into Legos, or, yeah, those are Legos. And so you can actually go on the Internet, find this Bible, these Bible stories, and see some gruesome things in Legos. Uh, so we have here, you shall not murder. Now, a lot of people use this or, or translate this as you shall not kill. The word here actually does mean murder. Um, and so it's a specific type of action that's occurring. It's a murder between two different people. And we can see in other parts of the Bible where this stipulation that we have um, is spelled out let me see if I can find that in my notes. They're completely messed up now. If you look in Genesis 9, 6, um, whoever sheds the blood of a man, uh, by man shall his blood be shed, for in his image did God make man. Um, and so also in Numbers, 30, Numbers 35, 31, it makes it clear that no human being can um, commute the sentence of death that is being prescribed in all of these uh, different, um, different laws that you have. And so capital punishment is not, in this particular section of the biblical witness, um, outlawed. And in fact, um, it's just the act of murder itself that is being outlawed. Uh, you should not commit adultery. One thing we need to remember um, in this patriarchal society, adultery meant that a married woman is having sex with another man that's not her husband. Um, this didn't mean a married man um, is having sex with uh, some other woman that you have. That was not adultery for the society. And so um, what's different about this from the other Mesopotamian societies that we see is that in most of the Mesopotamian societies, the gods were not involved in adultery. They didn't really care what you did. But in this right here, it's spelled out directly that this is sort of an affront to the divinity, to Yahweh, um, when you commit this type of adultery. And so God is getting involved in the marital life of the Israelite people. Um, you should not steal. Okay, makes sense. Uh, false witness. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Um, this, in Israelite society, this was a big, big issue because to commit, uh, um, to, uh, uh, to have anybody um, who has broken the law be put under that law, you needed witnesses to declare that this person had done something wrong or needed uh, at least, I think, two witnesses to declare this. And the thing about Israelite society is that the witnesses were not put under oath. Um, they, were not, they did not swear an oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, and so this right, right here is sort of an overarching oath that you would have for all witnesses so that they wouldn't um, be lying in, in these uh, courts of law that you would have. Now, another thing uh, to help prevent this in Israelite society, just a little uh, note, is that um, usually the witnesses um, were the ones to be the executioners if they were bringing about anything that uh, would, would require that somebody be put to death. 